I just don't think that that Lulu mid is going to get them very far if they run a tank top. Now, if you have a rumble top or some other carry, I don't have an issue with the Lulu mid. Yeah, we got ban, LeBlanc ban, Vladimir ban against CJ. All right, well, no change in bans yet so far for Jin Air. But they're going to have a different Callista. last ban here, considering they were the ones who banned out Urgot in the last game. And it will be the oh, Kog'Maw, okay. actually. Huh. And so does this mean you think they're planning on first picking Sivir away from CJ? Possibly. They could go for a takeaway like that, or they just want to be the only team with a late game hyper carry in terms of that jinx if they do decide to run it again. Oh, okay. I suppose there is that, too. And so what does CJ leave up? They're going to ban the Nunu. Okay, so not wanting that to get taken away by Chaser. That's weird, considering that yeah. CJ is the one with the priority. They first picked Nunu in the last game, and we do have champions like Gragas and like Sejuani that are still very powerful in the current meta. So Ambition going to have to mix it up this game. They may want to pressure Jin Air into first picking Sejuani here. If that's going to be the case, ha uh, they assume at least that Ambition has the larger champion pool, Cassiopeia. Maybe for GBM here. Let's see, Coco had a couple of nice alts last game, but it really was Space and Mad Life that carried that one. They're going to take it away, and are we going to see the Grungle? Ooh, and are we going to see Shy on Aurelia? That would be interesting. Rise would also be interesting. Could be played in the mid lane. There has been some mid lane rise popping up in the LPL recently. Yeah, well, he did get some buffs uh, uh, back in 5.6 to his Q. He's definitely a viable option right now yeah. in both mid and top lane. Although with Smite the way it is and with the challenger, uh, the challenging Smite the way it is right now with the Skirmisher Saber, I do think that Rise may be not the best in the top lane. But instead, CJ is going to take away the Nautilus this game. Okay. And so you'd have to imagine that's going to go over to Mad Life. He had a fantastic game against Jin Air last time they met, just destroying Captain Jack. And are we maybe going to see this rise picked up for Jin Air now? So I suppose that would mean they would send it to the top lane, but you know the takeaway of Rumble may be a bit more valuable here. Well, they don't know what the top lane matchup is going to be, so picking Rise would be quite confident. I think the Rumble much more likely. Go ahead and take that away from Shy. You also have some early game punch to balance out Cassiopeia, but that could make for some easy ganks by Ambition as well. Two you know, very immobile champions in the solo lanes. The CJ did ban uh, Nar last game as well, too. It's not banned this time around. You know, if they were worried about it. Apparently they're not as much so in the second game here. That's kind of interesting. Okay, and Chaser may be taking, or uh, Trace rather, may be taking that top lane Shivana again. And he will. Okay, so the Morgana taken away from Mad Life, but Nautilus was already locked in anyway. Tarek would be pretty great, but I don't <laughs> think we're going to see it. He would be fabulous indeed, but he would. That's interesting that Trace is putting such a heavy priority on this Shivana pickup, especially when that Hecarim ran amok in the last match and Literally. Shai certainly has the chance to select that champion one more time. Maybe Jin Air will be trying for that 1v1 in this game and picking away them Morgana just so you don't have that same level of engage from Mad Life. Of course you can try and block that depth charge as well with the Morgana black shield. So I think that huh. is that is a good takeaway. And I imagine we will see the Hecarim again. Ziggs? No. You don't think so. You don't think we're going to see Ziggs, do you? No. Please. Please. You don't You don't think we're going to see Ziggs, do you? You don't think we're going to oh, see wow. Ziggs? We're going to see Ziggs! Wow, it's oh, been a boy. long time since we've seen a Ziggs. Yes, it has. And we used to see him clear waves in other lanes all day, per day. But I'm very curious huh. how they're going to deal with this. Of course, he does have the bouncing bombs and... He does have that long auto attack too, so maybe yeah. this is a good lane counter to the Cassiopeia. I haven't seen oh, this okay. before. I could see it. I mean, if you think about how this matchup could theoretically work, you could see the Ziggs being okay. Yeah, it would be difficult to deal with. Also, yeah. you have a lot of backline damage. Of course, Ziggs is a very high DPS champion in the late game, right. just like Cassiopeia, but does have a bit more range to play around with. And are we going to see them pick up this Corky here? So that's why they've been the Kog'Maw. They want the Jinx in the late game, and they will take the Sejuani again. So actually, not much of a difference this time around from Jin Air in terms of their composition. They're still 
The nice thing, though, is that they don't have the Lulu this game. They're running with another threat in the Cassiopeia. So I really like this one a lot better, Doa. As okay. we do see the Corky actually taken as the last pick. So extraordinarily strong Siege here from CJ Entis. They've got great wave control with the Ziggs ultimate, of course, in the side lanes. Oops. And they'll have they'll have some very good zoning away from turrets, just like they did last game with the Cassiopeia with the Ziggs. And can they siege effectively? Of course, the, the Gragas jungle going to be quite good as well. You've got great zone control between the minefield, the Corky rockets, the Gragas barrels. You're really going to be able to siege really, really well. Oh yeah, you're going to be shoving people off turret all day with Gragas. And we haven't seen a lot of Gragas jungle in Korea yet. We've seen it in other regions plenty, but this is one of the first times, I believe it was played once before. Yeah, Wing, last week. Wing played it on yeah. Jenner when yeah, he was, was subbing in against KT Rolster. Didn't go so well for Jenner. Uh, not really. We'll see if Ambition can do better. This is the first time we've seen him on this champion in the jungle. An old mid lane pickup, so probably something that uh, he'll feel comfortable with. Yeah, Coco did switch to cleanse in the last second, by the oh, way, okay. away from that barrier. Probably smart. Good idea against Cassiopeia, yeah. yeah. And here we go, guys. Jin Air with a chance to tie things up against CJ Antis here in this best of five. Can they do it? Or will CJ put themselves one win away from victory? Let's get in the game and find out. fans are ready to go. Janair fans as well as we move on to Summoner's Rift for game number two. And everybody from Janair going up into this top lane. This is the first time in so long that we've seen Ziggs here in Korea. Yeah. So Jin I wouldn't say we've missed him per se. I have not missed him. Ooh, Q level one for Che. He's gonna throw binding in there. Nero! Oh! Oh! Narrowly misses Shy. That was a great attempt, but good positioning and try from Shy. Especially since he didn't have a movement summoner either. If that had landed, yeah. but yeah, Shy, very good, good positioning in that try brush to avoid that Q from the fog of war. Yeah. Obviously concerned about that possibility, and you have to be. That's a scary place to be in some of these invades. So Deep Ward's coming in topside from Jin Air. Now, it will be tough for them to 2v2 without that W start on Morgana because you want to be able to clear that wave. It does help you race for that level two. And now, Jin Air, they've got to they've scale very well here. They will have the scaling advantage, uh, not necessarily in terms of top or mid lane, but certainly in terms of AD carries the longer this goes on. With this Corky, though, I, I just want to I want to fast forward oh and see my. how Jinair is going to stop the siege. Yeah, they're going to try the 2v1 mid. This is, I just don't, right. I don't think that 2v1ing with Shivana is a very good strategy, Doa. And we saw how far behind Trace was last game. And now there's a lane freeze happening here in the bottom space, corralling those minions. And you also yeah. see the start on the bottom side in terms of the jungle takeaway already. Four Grog is just walking in yeah, I don't and think taking away the red buff. Meanwhile, same thing with Sejuani up in the top lane, but this is, they didn't get much from this situation and they weren't able to deny Coco very efficiently. Uh, do you think that GBM will have a better chance of denying Shy on this Cassiopeia perhaps? I don't really think so. Okay. Oh, we may have a 3v2 in mid lane, although Trace is close by, but he's really low health right now. Mad Life thinking of coming in, they decide against it. And Jay and Pilot push so far up though, but they don't have vision on Trace, they don't really know where Chaser is as well too, so CJ deems that one a bit too risky. Great pathing by Mad Life too. Look at this, he's already down in the bottom lane. Oh, he's actually just going to recall right here as the TP comes in, but Checking out that early dragon. Not so much of a threat with the Gragas, comparatively. Well, here we go. Yeah, they are able to fast push this yeah. just a little bit, but that's so not going to be taking very much damage with just a Doran's Blade. Well, they're doing more damage to the turret early, early on than they did last time. Now, Chase Morgana has uh, been pretty good the few times we've seen him play it. 
obviously, but Mad Life still 100% on that Nautilus, which I believe is only over one game right now, right? Maybe two. Two, I believe. I think it was just one, and then he played Blitzcrank, remember? Oh. Uh, yeah, so it is just one. But he has won 100% of those games, <laughs> those one games. <laughs> well, looks like... Oh, Ambition coming down. There's the slight knockback onto Trace. Just going to push him out of lane a little bit more. Trace is keeping up this game at the very least. Even though that freeze was happening, Ambition deciding to go into the bottom side. Look at that ward right outside of the turret range, actually, to make sure they know what he's doing. And Ambition is just trying to deny Trace as hard as possible right now. Make sure the lane is frozen. Make sure that he doesn't have these Krugs to farm. This is very smart of Ambition. Oh! Smite on the big Krug and Trace turning around onto Ambition. Manages to get the little one, but I think Ambition coming out ahead on that one. Here we go. Yep, Che, oh, he spies Mad Life coming out of that river brush. Yeah, Jin is just trying to put fast push these turrets and get as much damage as possible and try and snowball a lead that way. Just really not sold on this idea, especially as Shy does have Mad Life there to help try and get that lead again. And Ambition is messing pretty heavily with Trace on the bottom side of the map. Yep. Oh, Ambition coming down. He's going to spy Chaser here. And we'll see who wins the smite war. Oh, it's going to be Ambition. Chaser smiting that one a bit too early. Gets a slow. Chaser's going to turn that one around there, but no support. So Ambition will be able to just push him back. His vision from the Raptor pit activated too, but I don't know if he's going to find the ward in time. Doesn't look no, like he did. Not, but he should have a good idea about what's going on. Yeah. But meanwhile, Shy able to get some decent farm up in top lane with a little bit of help from Mad Life. Now Corky has pushed that wave all the way back into that mid turret, but I don't think this pressure is going to be able to last in the mid lane with Zig's wave clear abilities and the fact that he can just send those minions through the minefield. Well, as we move on too, that wave clear is going to only get better for Zig. so if they can't get it done now, they're not going to be able to get it done. Very, very concerning, but like I said, at least oh. Jin Air has a secondary damage threat in this game, so they won't be as reliant on Pilot as they were in game one of this series. Meanwhile, CJ, because of this Corky, they really do need to take some towers down after that Trinity Force, otherwise this Jinx could theoretically get out of control, and having all that burst, and well, just the sustained damage, rather, from Cassiopeia, setting people up for a series of resets because if everybody gets low simultaneously it'll be really easy for pilot to clean up the team fight yeah so but it'll be like little john's best day ever he loves it when everybody gets low he does love it when everybody yeah. gets low i heard he wrote a song about it even it's pretty much the only lyric in fact that's so. true he really likes it and so coco gonna push that lane a little bit more gbm a bit higher on cs up in that top lane the lead for Shy not quite as great this time around. Still opening up in a kind of disturbing way, even with Mad Life now down at the bottom. Chaser still trying to use the advantage. Whoa! Gets it actually that yeah. time. Smote the large raptor that time. Mission able to finally find that turret though. They're trying to use the fact that the duo in mid lane does have pressure just to counter jungle, but it's just. I'm not sure it's effective enough. Ambition's still able to find farm. Chaser is waiting for this one. Che mm -hmm. will go ahead and ward this just to make sure it's safe for him to go for it. It is indeed safe for him to take the red buff as we see Ambition wants to grab the crab instead. Are we going to maybe see CJ try for a dragon pretty soon here? They don't know where Chaser is, and they're not yeah. going to see him at the red, so. With the recall, however, of Coco, they are going to have to wait. Unfortunate timing as Pilot will go back and pick up a BF sword this time, so not going pickaxe into Avarice Blade like we saw in that last game. Chaser with the steal. Yeah, and it looks like he might be able to get these Ancient Krugs instead. Shy coming down to try to stop that. Chaser a little bit too threatening, though. Now, does this trigger the dragon is the question that he knows Chaser Looks like it is. is up on the top side because everyone on CJ, now that Coco recalled, is converging on that point. And Trace will actually take their red buff. Yep. Okay, so trading red buffs. 
Zigzag Exalt used just to push that wave back in mid, and that should allow CJ to take a very easy dragon here. Meanwhile, top turret does fall to GBM. That's really quite necessary for oh, Air. Trace, can he steal it? Waiting for it. Nope. Whoa, dragon. <laughs> Nearly taken out. Pilot trying to do his best wild turtle impression there. <laughs> Couldn't quite steal at that time. It was close. hair too late. And now Trace now back at the bottom, but hardly any damage onto this tower. So CJ decided to try and freeze that one, but due to Cassiopeia's zoning up in the top side and Mad Light's commitment to staying up there with Shy, they weren't able to get any damage down, really. They have a sheet now, so maybe. Wow, that's good damage on that turret from CJ. And finally, Trace using his smite. Yeah. Onto the cannon minion, and they are going to use the burnout AOE to clear the wave. So he will catch up a little bit in terms of CS, but that gold lead going over to Jin Air early on. Now just a straight teleport from bottom up in the top side, Trace. Well, why not? Need to keep that CS. You know the uh, dragon has been taken. I would imagine they know by now. And so you know that you're probably not going to need that teleport for anything anytime soon. Yeah, and pretty smooth transition as well with this Jinx. Right. Able to come into bottom after going for the Krugs here, looks like. Yeah, we'll take down the Krugs and head down. Early Berserker's Greaves this time, so a little bit of an adaptation. Pilot, usually when you see the early Berserker's Greaves like this, it does mean that you want to put a lot of minion wave pressure down, that if you're going to be left alone with the tower for any length of time, that you will take it out. So Jin Air, Fast Push is the name of the game this time. And we'll see if CJ can weather the storm. Certainly with the Ziggs, they have tools that they can use to clear the side waves with that ultimate and play the map better and try and scale late. But even so, Jinx still going to be quite dangerous in the late game as more wards going Ooh. down right now. Mad Life gets hit with a huh. bind. It's like, so that's what it feels like hit by a max range by still doesn't know what it feels like to be hit by that and then die immediately working on that one and so far a pretty passive game as these teams kind of rotate about and yeah gbm even game as well yeah gbm not going for the arm guard this game it really didn't serve him very well at all in the last one so it's good to see him just go for that tier started stacking right away and now he's in much better shape to lane up against that Ziggs and hit a more consistent power spike than we saw. Trace also catching right back up in terms of CS. Yeah. And has the faster Saber as well. So he will get more money from those gold camps and, or from those jungle camps and maybe look to increase that lead just a little bit further if he can. He'll try. And now we finally have that 2v2 at bottom. And we'll see if Space and Mad Life can kind of be their aggressive selves that we saw them in the last series between these two teams. Space and Mad Life won lane really hard against Jin Air. Different circumstances this time around. And different ADC. Yeah, and also Jin just a, a different result in that early game as well. The fact that this Cassiopeia was able to bully the Hecarim early and get that tower is huge in terms of the difference this game. Now Trace does have some pressure in top. They have put down a lot of these wards to make sure that Trace is able to push it all the way up to the tier two. And now they're oh. going after Shy, forcing that ultimate. Yeah, not bad. A little bit of a win there for Jin Air. Chaser getting that with just a basic ability, and they're going to be able to get a little bit of damage done to this turret. And GBM is definitely the guy you want in mid lane if you're in this situation. GBM is a very cautious mid laner. He rarely overextends. He plays with a lot of respect for where the enemy team can be on the map while still maintaining very high farm. Yeah. That is one of his advantages. As early in his career, he played too aggressively, but now it's very rare to see him get killed in the laning phase. Well, it was interesting. In an interview he did uh, a few weeks ago, he said, you know, I used to want to be the guy that was making all the plays and be flashy, but I had a change of mindset, and I just wanted to say, hey, you know, I'll just play my role and see what I can do for the team. And Yeah, he's very patient he, now. Yeah, since he made that decision, his results have been way better. And I think it's opened up a lot of champion picks, too, that he wasn't able to play before. Yeah, he did pigeonhole himself into some wacky picks at times. Yeah, a little bit too much Orianna. Or Heimerdinger. Yeah. <laughs> Heimerdinger as well. Yep. Uh, change in attitude that helped out quite a bit for this team. 
All right, so it will be Merc Treads actually for GBM. Okay. Cautious, even though it's, well, I suppose Corky's early damage, the magic damage, that will help him a little bit since he does have that shorter range and has to be a little bit more of a frontline threat. So Trinity Force is done now for space. Corky has been one of his best champions so far this season, but these bursty ADs, the timing oh, window that you have awkward. to operate them now before they, the tanks simply outscale them is quite low. Wow, Chaser walks right in there too. They've got a ward. Jin Air not really in a position to, to uh, act on this as CJ knows exactly where they are. And CJ can't really counter it. They don't really have enough people around to try to fight it. Uh, well, also there's a black shield in there. There you go, just a little bit of oh, a yeah. delay. They want to get as much poke damage as possible so that they can make a play onto this dragon wow. in 15 seconds. Very nicely done by Space. Yeah, really Good accurate patience. those rockets. Good patience. Seeing everybody clumped up right there, waiting until the dragon timer was ticking down before making a move. Well, and look at that. I mean, it looks like that may just give CJ the dragon right there. We have a recall going on from Jay when the dragon has just come up. So no Morgana. And yeah, Janair. Just going to give this one up. That's going to be another dragon for CJ. And they complete their, uh, or they continue rather, their dragon shutout of Jin Air. This is pretty insane, actually. Yeah, fourth game in a row. Still no dragons for the Jin Air Green Wings. This is exactly what CJ needs right now. Now, if you're Jin Air, it's not the end of the world to give up that dragon, but you can't give up three and four without putting up some sort of a fight. CJ definitely going to have the stronger. They have that power spike with the Trinity Force. Pilot has not completed an Infinity Edge yet, and GBM with no defenses and still trying to stack up that tier. So I agree with Jin Air that now is not an opportune time to fight, but that Dragon total is not looking too great for them. Chaser trying not to give away the Raptor right here. It seems like in the last few series, CJ of just, or Jin Air rather, is, has just never found that right time to fight, you know? Well, CJ. For whatever reason. They tried to set up for it, they tried to make a pick, but CJ had the ward in the right location, and you could see that patience waiting to poke out the support so that they effectively couldn't fight. Now, Trace and Shy going at it. Trace a little bit down in terms of items, hasn't gone back to shop recently. And yep. Nice knockback. Yeah, no kidding, and he's gonna go in. There's the fear on the Trace, he could be in trouble. Will he get him? Looks like he will, and first blood is going to go to Shy what on that Hecarim. A beautiful play by Shy. No kidding. Man, Hecarim is starting to be a, a potential must ban against this guy. Just he using so that, using that Cinder Hulk AOE damage and yep. moving up through the lane, setting it up so that he could predict that ultimate from Shibana, uh, having that E, and then wow. stuffing the dragon's descent right as it happens, and then immediately turning around. Ambition there at exactly the right time to knock him into the wall for the sun, and Shy will finish that one up and take a turret with Ambition at the same time, and CJ really powering through right now. Look at Space, he's already chunked out Che and Pilot. He's doing this by himself, too. He has to back off, but did a bit of damage to the turret, did a lot of damage to Che and Pilot. CJ's wise to force their advantage right now. Yep, this is the they time. They have to get that gold lead. This is the time to make this composition work the way it's designed to, and so far, CJ doing that really, really well, and with the way that Coco is held mid lane, too, I feel like they can just kind of rotate into that lane and take the turret pretty much at will at this point, can't they? Well, as long as there isn't any more wave clear there, GBM can hold it, and if he has some help with Jinx, perhaps they could, but there's that auto damage well, going down onto the turret. And GBM needs to be there in order to protect the turret. Better and better situation for CJ Antis. Now, Jinner isn't out of this one yet. Not yet. But when things like this start to happen, you get a little bit worried, but yeah, to be fair, usually we do see Jinair just kind of collapse in game number two, and so far they've done okay this game. They've kept They've up. done much better this game. I mean, we were looking at a very different scenario 18 minutes in the last one where CJ yeah. was absolutely ripping through Jinair at that time. Well, very different uh, series as well so far in terms of game number two at the moment anyway, because if you keep in mind their last series, the second game they ended like eight, 9,000 gold down to CJ. I'm very impressed with CJ this game, even more so than last time, because in this game, Jin Air didn't have that big deficit in the top lane, right? For the most part, yeah. 
they've kept up. And instead, it was just very patient timing, uh, great dragon control that's kept CJ Entis in this one. And even those little things like forcing that recall by space and hitting that Trinity Force timing with Corky and using it so well, as well as Shy 1v1 pretty much outplaying Trace in the top side, has yielded a pretty substantial advantage. Do you think like the Shivana pick is possibly not the best choice here? Shivana is a good champion. I'm not yeah. sure if Shivana is the right pick for these 2v1s, but that said, Trace did hold his own, and Jin Air had that early tower down compared to CJ. Oh, there's a smite use with that Skirmisher Saber. Shy and Trace skirmishing appropriately with their sabers. Well, you'd assume there's sabers somewhere on their person because you can't really see any. Shy just has that item advantage, however. Yep. And Shy just been building tanky so far in this series. Hasn't gone for the Trinity Force. Not having to run away from Trace at that time. He's running a bit low on mana anyway. This vision control is so much better for CJ as well. And Bishop oh, yeah. been setting up a lot of this. But look at the deep wars on both sides of the map right now. For CJ Entis, they can pretty much just pressure tier twos with impunity. And now here comes Ziggs. Maybe he can get some more poke off. They're trying to use that sheen just to get as much tower damage as they can. Yeah. Oh, well, they did a little bit again, but they're really forcing Jyn Air to kind of move around to where they want them to, you know? CJ's playing so well. Yeah, CJ's like the puppet master right now. Oh, red buff went to Ambition, it looks like. Yep, Ambition. Grab that one away. They're, they're just contesting every single objective. Coming back into the mid lane right now. GBM is there to catch the wave. GBM's going after the Rylai's this game, so he's hoping to kite out Shy and help peel for the Jinx. I think this is a really reasonable buy considering he's up against a lot of mixed damage. There's the Abyssal Scepter not going to be as useful in this game, especially if a Hecarim's on top of him. So go for the raw HP and the fact that you will be able to kite. I'm a bit surprised GPM went for the Ignite in this game instead of the Ghost. Hmm. That's, I think, a little bit strange. So here's the dragon, number three. Yep. CJ with the position on it, CJ with the superior wards and already Jin trying to chase out Trace. Well, if they can chunk him out, then this dragon is all but theirs. But Jin Air looking more ready to fight this one than they have a, a lot of the other ones. Trace coming down, he's got his teleport, so does Shy, but he doesn't need it at the moment, he's already there. Shy's just gonna take blue buff. CJ's decided they're gonna give this one up. And they can totally do that too. Yeah. Or they're going to try and delay it long enough for Shy to get blue. But oh, Dragon getting a bit low. Zigzalt comes in. Oh, they're Teleport going. Teleport happening. Dragon, can they take it? Who's going to pick it up? Ults come through. Looks like Trace does manage to grab it for Jin Air, but CJ is going to get a couple kills at least. They got one. Looks like that's all they'll be able to come away with. So Jin Air manages to take the Dragon, but loses Pilot. And they may lose this mid lane as well, too. GBM's going to try to save it, but I don't know. Yeah, the turret's getting so much low. zoning there. Yeah. They're not going to be able to save this one. Yeah. So CJ just what with great map pressure. Wow, are they going to get two turrets out of this? Jeez, look at the look poke, at the though. Rockets. Yeah, Trace trying to come back in. He gets caught a little bit. Shea out of the fight already. Trace locked up again. He's going to go down. A kill for space as Shy backs out, tanking that turret aggro. And CJ just going to turn right around to your chaser and GBM. Able to save the turret for now, but that was a lot of damage and another kill for CJ. This is such clean snowballing from CJ. Yeah, very. Operating on very small advantages in this game. Very small. No, we haven't seen CJ look this good in like two years. I am very impressed. Coco already with the death cap completed, but they know exactly how much pressure they can put on these lanes with the items they have against Jyn Air's champions. And it's working out incredibly well for them. Yes, it is. And just pushing that lane down and bottom, making sure it continues to push as far as it can. So CJ not getting that dragon, but they trade two turrets and a kill for it. Well worth it for CJ Entis. I would say Considering so. Considering they already had the first two, now it will be a Void Staff for Coco eventually. He's putting together that item. No real magic resist on the side of Jyn Air yet, even though the Aegis yeah. is coming in eventually for Chaser. 
at just every little thing. Mad Life there in the jungle, threatening constantly. There's your chaser comes in, they're gonna lock up space. It's a lot of damage on him. Nice Grog Assault. Oh, but he can't save him from Jinx's rocket. And so Space trying to take out the turret, can't quite do it. They're still going to chase down Trace here. Shy coming in over the wall, goes Ambition, gets hit with that Dark Binding, though. Trace still on top of him. Coco and Mad Life catching up, though. Here comes Chaser and Pilot. CJ still on the retreat. Shy locked up for quite a long time by Che. And everyone was trying to stop Ch uh, Trace from ulting Ambition back towards Jin Air. Yeah. The Satchel Charge and the E from Hecarim both used to prevent him from getting that angle and picking up another kill. So a good defensive play on CJ after a bit of an overextension there from space in the mid lane. So they have been slowed down a little bit. Gold lead still at 4K and CJ continuing to get all the wards they want down onto the map. Well, that's the thing is you can kill space, but CJ just still has complete map control at this point. Bottom turret is, uh, or bottom lane is starting to push maybe a little bit more in Jinair's favor. A little bit hard to tell right now, but I think it is. So CJ's gonna, going to go need to deal with that at some point, but the rest of the map is theirs. Trace been stuck farming at tier two this entire time, finally getting closer to that Rando and Zoman, but uh, Shy well served in terms of the armor and MR he's already picked up. Rylize is finished for GBM, so Hecarim wouldn't be much less of a threat on pilot as they try and dive those back lines. Jin Air, they've got to hold out for a long, long time. Maybe another 10 minutes and huh. they'll be in a position where they have an advantage. But Maybe if they have the six. They well they really they really need they really need the last whisper completed to help deal with Shy right now. In spite of the ability to kite Shy out, it's still gonna take so long to kill him at this point that Coco and Space will probably clean up your front line before that happens. Yeah, frozen heart frozen done. Frozen heart done. Yeah, it's really quite problematic for them. Meanwhile, Trace we see is moving towards that Randuins, but with Ninja Tabby and Randuins, he's still going to take a lot of poke damage from Ziggs and Corky. True. Not to mention some decent damage perhaps coming in from Ambition as well. Well, is done for GBM. So continuing to kind of do what he can and is ahead on CS. Shy is still harassing Trace. There's just nobody that can really well, 1v1 Shy at this point. Trace has no MR right now, yeah. and Cinder Hulk, uh, the mixed damage coming in from Hecarim because he doesn't have that Trinity Force. He hasn't gone straight into that item to boost his physical damage, so that AoE not really answered for. Meanwhile, Shy does have that cowl, so in terms of Cinder Hulk Wars, Shy is going to win out in terms of that damage over time and all of Shivana's yep. damage. Magic as well. We'll watch Shy just like sit on Trace and. Trace has Gromp buff though, so that's actually kind of annoying. It's almost evening things out. Well, Coco trying to push Che back, dragging up in about 45 now. And this is going to be one that CJ may want to grab. Yeah, they, if they let another dragon go over here, they will let Jin Air off the hook a little bit. They have to start that dragon timer before this jinx gets too big. Yeah. They are very tanky, but late game jinx is not easy to deal with, especially with the amount of peel that they have between Sejuani, Cassiopeia, and Shivana Ultimates. Yeah, that's much, much closer than game number one, which is good because we usually don't see that out of Jenner after they lose the first one. It's a good sign. Either way, though, not out of the woods yet. Shy still pushing ahead. He's done a decent amount of damage to Trace as well, too, with the Dragon coming out right now. Oops. Shy actually just ults. Wow, tried to catch Trace with that one. And I think he's going to back off. Meanwhile, the positioning for CJ looks pretty good around this yeah, Baron. They don't have Hector Dragon, Bolt, though. Now two top laners recalling. Both have home guard. Yeah, Trace has a bit uh, lower health, but he's going to be able to get it quickly with that home guard. Here come the teleports. Chaser going in deep, but where's the follow-up? Dragon is taken by CJ. Manlife turning it around, and that's a lot of damage onto GB on the boat. Oh, Here comes Shy. If only he had his ult right now, it would be over already. And Trace, oh, nice wow. damage from Ziggs. Good knockback. Bad life grabs GBM. GBM flashes away, gets the kill onto Shy. But can he escape? Space flashing ahead, gets a kill onto Che. GBM taken down now, too. So CJ with a dragon and a couple kills, only losing Shy. And they are going right for Baron. Wow, CJ just has had control of this series. 
for what, four games now, pretty much. Well, the disruption offered by this Gragas is so good with the Corky because you're able to isolate targets for a lot of bursts with the yeah. Phosphorus Bomb and the Rockets in between the auto attacks. Trace so here spite. we go. He's going to try it. Nope, not there in time, and he's going to have to back away immediately. And in that little scuffle right there as well, Coco hit a massive satchel charge, bouncing three people into a wall. Yeah, that was huge. Just really nice follow-up from CJ. Mad Life landed a great anchor onto Gank by Mom as well, too. And and uh, so really, everybody on CJ just hitting all the skill shots they needed to. Right, and GBM with going down early with that Rylize is huge as well, because that hurts the kiting capability of Jyn Air. Jyn Air is really lucky that Shy's ultimate was down, because if it if it had not that been down, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, Shy would have crushed him. CJ would have just annihilated him. That could have easily been an ace if Shy would have had his ult. Meanwhile, they're still desperately trying to fend off these Baron empowered minion waves. I yeah, really want to see that easy. fight again, actually. And we make it our chance here. Uh, CJ in a perfect position. This game going to be a little bit more competitive than the last one, but Jyn Air just not with that same level of objective control. Oh, Ambition getting a bit grabbed. Ambition in a bit of trouble. Mad Life, can he save him? Ambition body slamming his way to safety. But not taking a ton of damage overall. Here comes CJ. CJ really came alive in the last part of this season. Sure did. Even when we look at them and their run at the start, the it turret. wasn't this level of clean play. I mean, look at how aggressive they are in terms of taking out these towers and taking out the dragons and yep. just outplaying their opponents another every turret. single time. There's a yet another tower. Five to one. I'm going to say it again. This is the best CJ has been in two years. Yeah, I agree this with is, you. This is the best we've seen CJ play since Blaze got to the finals in Champion Spring 2013. By Play, far. Eh, plays one WCG. They had a pretty high uh, high point there. And true, but I think overall though. Oh, oh. from downtown. Oh, Coco dunks him. Wow, that's a double kill now. And CJ engages. There's a Gragas ult. GBM ulted long range. Shy over the top. Goodbye, Trace. He's taking a lot of damage. Can he get out? No. And CJ, are they just going to end it right here? Do they actually have time to do it? I don't. They have a minion well, wave coming in. Ambition going to tank it with his damage reduction on I his W. I guess they so. will. Yeah, there goes the first Nexus turret. I think this may be a little bit too much with GBM still up. They're going to keep trying, though. Ten seconds till Pilot appears. Oh, man, this is so dangerous for CJ. But look at them tear through these turrets with Baron. They're actually going to do it. Pilot is not going to get up in time. And CJ with a 2-0 so far by Jinx Rocket. GG. And CJ Antis continues to just look so good in this semifinal match. What in the world can Jyn Air do? Wow, this team is just on fire right now. I don't, the misplays in the early game from Jyn Air were not that serious. No. Uh, they came back, put up a much better performance in terms of the farming and the lane swap and the 2v1 in the mid lane, found themselves with that turret advantage especially. But CJ is able to take very small mistakes and really punish them hard and keep on pressing through their power spikes around this Corky so they don't give Genera a chance to scale into that late game. I, I really want to see what set up that 